Welcome to Crystal Springs United Methodist Church. It is a wonderful day to be in worship. I am Jana Job. I am the youth minister here at Crystal Springs United Methodist Church, and this is a great day indeed. This is a day two years in the making. Um, for those of you who are joining us online, welcome. We are so glad you are with us. We want to thank everybody for wearing your masks in the sanctuary. Please continue to do so and to social distance so that we can all stay safe during this, um, hopefully, what will be the waning times of this COVID-19. If you are joining us online, we do ask that you please register your attendance, drop us a line in the comments. We'd um, greatly appreciate that. I want to welcome you to the official Youth Sunday slash Marines-ish Sunday. If this were a normal year, if there were no such thing as COVID-19, we would be starting our annual um, student ministries outreach ministry called Marines. Um, however, this is not a normal year, and we didn't get to do it last year. So this year we decided that we wanted to do something. Um, we might not could do Marines like we normally do it, but we could certainly do something. So a few of us have been here all weekend long. We did not spend the night. We've come and gone, so parents, thank you for your willingness and getting your kids here and back. We greatly appreciate that. But for those of us that have done this, it has been a fantastic weekend. And as I've told the um, students all weekend long, this has just been so good to be back, to be worshiping together, to be laughing together, and most importantly, to be praising and serving God together. So as is our tradition, which would normally be the start of Marines, we will do this with the conclusion of it this year, our youth and our students are leading us in worship today, and so we are so glad that you are here to join us with that. So as we begin to worship, I'm going to ask Larson Carpenter to come up, and she's going to call us to worship. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening, accompanied by a ten-string instrument a harp and the melody, the melody of a lair. You thrill me, Lord, with all that you have done for me. I sing for joy for what you have done. Our music this morning and all of our hymns are some of our uh, youth ministry's favorite songs, so we invite you to stand and sing with us. The tunes are easy. You'll be able to pick them up, and the words will be on the screen. So let us stand and praise God together.
seated. Our scripture this morning comes from 1 John, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 11 and verse 20. Hear the words of our God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. <laughs> Loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For, for every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his baptism, in water and by shedding his blood on the cross, and not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit who is truth confirms it with his testimony. So we have these three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And all three agree. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe the greater testimony that comes from God. And God has testified about his Son. All who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that, th that this testimony is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about his Son. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. And we know that the Son of God has come, and he has given us understanding so that we know the true God. And now we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God, and he is, and he is eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hey, y'all. Good morning. I'm Grace Kitchens, and I'm doing the children's sermon this morning. So, children, you can come on up. It's okay. You can just come up here. Okay, so the theme for today is Jesus appeared to the disciples, and I am reading Luke 24, 36 through 48. Now while, they, now while they were telling these things, Jesus himself suddenly stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought that they were looking at a spirit. And Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened, and why are your doubts arising in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you plainly see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet while they stood, while they still could not believe it, because their joy and astonishment. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They served him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in front of them. Now he said to them, Here, these are my words, which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all the things that are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, So it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And the repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Okay. So, I remember going on camping trips when I was young. And one of my family's favorite activities on those trips was sitting around a campfire at night and telling ghost stories. 
As I listened, I told myself over and over, there's no such thing as ghosts. But that did not keep some of those stories from scaring the daylights out of me. I often found it hard to go to sleep that night. Now, that might seem like a strange way to begin a Bible lesson, but even, but even in Bible times, some people believed in ghosts and were afraid of them. Listen to an example from the Bible. So it begins after two men had traveled on a long road to a town called Amasis. And they talked about Jesus' death and all that had happened. As they walked, they were joined by a man. They didn't realize it at first, but it was Jesus. After Jesus revealed himself to them, they went straight back to Jerusalem and told Jesus' disciples. As they told the disciples they had seen Jesus, he suddenly appeared among them. He said to them, Peace be with you. Knowing he died, they thought he was a ghost. And the Bible says that they were terrified, terrified and filled with fear. So Jesus asked them, why are you troubled? And why do, you, why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and look at my feet. Still the disciples weren't sure what to think. So Jesus asked them for something to eat. <laughs> and he ate some fish and they watched. And it showed them he wasn't a ghost because a ghost doesn't eat food. The disciples realized that Jesus had come back to life. And they spent the next month or so with him. After Jesus returned back to heaven, those same disciples went all over the world telling about Jesus' crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection. They never stopped telling about what happened. You and I have been called to tell others about Jesus, just like those disciples did. We must be a witness for Jesus too. We must tell the world that Jesus is alive. God, we serve a risen Savior. He is alive. Help us to be witnesses of what he has done in our lives. In Jesus' name. Please stand and let's join together in the affirming of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Would you please join us in singing this next one as well, please? <laughs> Glory. 
as I told our students when we began on Friday, obviously we can't do a lot like we would normally do at Marines. There would be, thank you. <laughs> Let me start that over. As I told our students on Friday, we aren't able to do everything like we would normally do at Marines. There's no 5 a.m. wake ups. We did do PT though yesterday. Um, obviously they're not going to school. We haven't been able to do the air raids like we normally do. But we've tried to introduce some elements um, of Marines. And one of those is that we always honor those Marines that have participated all six years. Now, I know that with us not doing it last year and this year being different, we still want to recognize those that had we had Marines last year and this year like normal, um, they would have achieved the highest rank that you can as a student, which is the rank of major. So I first want to call down our four seniors who represent that. It's Will Thornton, Sam Papazan, Anna Roberson, and Walker Johnson. <laughs> My mind just went completely blank. So the four of y'all come on down. I also want to recognize, and I only see one of them in here. Um, we have a senior, well, she's not a senior anymore. She's a freshman in college, but Hannah, along with uh, Parker, if she were here, Madeline Campbell, Tyler Cox, Cade Romano. Had we been able to have Marines last year, they would have achieved the rank of major. So Hannah, come on down. We're gonna honor this, especially since you've done it this year anyway, as chaperone and help out. And before we actually get to the service, I'm gonna do something I've never done. One of my privileges as the commanding officer of Marines, I'm gonna do a field promotion because we have one more senior who, Grace Davis, come on down. The only reason, the only reason Grace is not an official sixth year was because she literally did not live in the United States as a seventh grader. Um, however, Grace has been active in Marines from the moment she moved here. I think you did it like a month after you moved here that first year. She was like, what am I doing? Um, Grace obviously also has been a huge part of our praise band, a leader, in our youth ministry, so Grace, it is my privilege to field promote you to the rank of major. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our official real life military. <laughs> Attention to orders. Marines, on your feet. We may need some remedial training in the parking lot after the service today. <laughs> Team. Okay, the Department of Crystal Springs United Methodist Church Marine Corps. This is to certify that the chaplain of Crystal Springs United Methodist Church Marine Corps has awarded the Silver Marine Cross for exceptional and meritorious service while serving as a Crystal Springs United Methodist Church Marine. Your leadership and faith were an inspiration to those you have served with. Your commitment to Jesus was reflected in everything you did and compelled other soldiers of Christ to strive to be better. You not only lived in a Christian-like manner during Marines, you continued to do so throughout the rest of the year. Because of your commitment to the Crystal Springs United Methodist Church Marine Program, each year was greater than the previous. Your leadership, skills, and presence will be greatly missed in the Marines Program. You are a credit to your company, the Church Marine Corps, and the Crystal Springs United Methodist Church. Given under the hand and in the city of Crystal Springs this day, of April 2021, Jenna Job Commanding, Reverend Roger Schott.
Okay, if y'all would join me. Thank y'all. All right, as the praise band is, oh, that's right. I forget. While they're heading back, oh, one of these days I'm going to remember to take this off. I cannot tell y'all how many times I tried to drink through this, eat through this over the weekend. Oh. Um, this next song that they're going to do as their special music, this was actually the song that would have been our theme song last year in 2020. The name of the song is called Glorious Day. Um, and it's quickly become a favorite of ours, so we hope that you will enjoy it and um, be able to worship with God like we are. Apparently, Sam is having major difficulties with his guitar <laughs> strap. Oh, that wasn't you that time? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
every year at Marines, we like to highlight our seniors and their leadership and their um, just incredible witness and testimony and ministry um, all these years. And so we began today with Sam. Where'd he go? I know he's running off. Sam with his incredibly gorgeous prelude this morning. So thank you, Sam, for that. Sam, I don't think there's an instrument that he can't play if he puts his mind to it. And so my other seniors, um, I have asked them all to share in our sermon time this morning. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Good morning. <laughs> okay. So first I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Anna. That's I, most of you probably know. Um, so, earlier this week, Jana texted us, and she asked us to talk about how God has shaped our life through this church and through Marines. And that's kind of terrifying, so <laughs> um, just bear with me, please. Um, to begin, I'd like to talk about how much this church means to me. It has been like a second home to me. I've grown up in this church. I've been a baby in the nursery. I've been a God's pods in the upper room. And now I'm a senior youth at the Apex. Um, it's kind of crazy because I remember my brothers, and when my brothers were in the youth group, they, and they just started building the Apex across the street, um, Jana was letting some of the older um, elementary kids come over and check it out because she knew that one day that would be our Apex and that we would find a home there. And she let me come over, and on the stage that we perform on every Wednesday night, and it's just like a little raised up thing, under the carpet that's there, she asked all the members of the youth and some of the younger ones to write their favorite Bible verse and their name, and I remember how she let me write my name, and I always thought that was so cool, and how excited I was to join the big kids' youth, and I couldn't wait until I got there. But now that I find myself here and about to leave, it's kind of sad. <laughs> um... When I was finally old enough to join the youth group, um, I quickly found my place there as a part of the worship team. By being able to sing and perform, I was able to grow my relationship closer with God. The environment at the, at the Apex is not only comforting, but the people are absolutely awesome there too. I've had some amazing small group leaders, Jill and Delina, thank you. I've had an amazing um, person as an influence, where's Jana? <laughs> Thank you very much, um, and I've just been able to grow my relationship closer with my friends, too, because, I mean, how many people can say that, like, their best friends are in their youth group with them, are in their worship team with them, and that they get to sing with them every week, so that's been very fun. So to talk about Marines, Marines is one of the best life-changing experiences that you can get at this church or even in this town, in my personal opinion. And uh, you know how sometimes you don't realize how much you're gonna, you miss something until it's actually gone? And I feel like we've all kind of experienced that with these, this past year and not being able to do the things that we love. Well, Marines, definitely one of those things. I didn't realize how much I needed this fellowship and how much I needed uh, the Apex and Jana and all this until this weekend came back. Um, it's just been really special. Um, although seventh grade was my first year as a member of the Marines, I was always kind of there in the background. I have three older brothers. My dad was the PT instructor. My mom always helped with the meals. Sorry. Um, I've basically been there from the beginning. <laughs> Sorry. I remember um, the kids using our showers at the very beginning. Thomas was one of the first ones there. And... Um, Showing up at camp early with my mom before school when she would pass out <laughs> breakfast burritos <laughs> with Miss Amy Wright. Um, and I, of course, I could never forget my dad at five in the morning yelling at a hundred and plus kids to get down and do your push ups. <laughs> oh no, there are just so many parts of Marines in this church. Like the nights that we'd have before the whole thing would start. And it was just the worship team and the leaders. And we would get there on Saturday night. And that was a chance for us to set up and get ready. But it was also a chance for us to get together and grow closer and bond. Because, you know, the rest of the week we'd all be pretty busy with worship and everything else. But that one night was just a special time for us to really just talk and get excited for the week. I loved the games that we would play as platoon. Those were fun, and they would get very intense. I don't know if any of y'all saw that, but when we were picking out our 
earlier when we were um, picking out our bandanas for this week, Grace and I went at it <laughs> to get the same one. Um, and the best part about it, honestly, is just the fact that there are 100 plus teenagers getting together who probably would never have gotten together in the first place to get together at that one place and to worship God freely and openly and just be able to expose ourselves raw to him because he accepts us as who we are and he loves us unconditionally. So to conclude, <laughs> I would like to say thank you for Jana for all the hard work and dedication that you've given to us in this youth group. You work endlessly to ensure to, that we have something to do and grow in this community as people. I appreciate everything that you've done for me and although we're moving away, this will be our home and our safe haven. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to try not to cry. Hi, Ava. <laughs> um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Grace Davis. I moved here and have been part of the Apex Youth Group for about four years now. Um, Apex has brought me so much happiness throughout my life that it would take forever to list all the things that I love about it. And I won't go through the whole list, but I will tell you some of the things that have been a true blessing in my life because of Apex, which some of them include meeting Jana, and she has been awesome, and meeting new people that have become my best friends, having a safe and familiar place to be, like you know, being at a new school and not really knowing anyone, Apex was so kind of my safe space for a while. And then starting at, our, I'm sorry, inspiring and in some of the most hilarious discussions that we have in small groups with Jill and Delina. Those are awesome. And then one of my all-time favorites, obviously, Marines. Um, in the beginning of 2017, I was getting ready to leave Japan and start my new life in Mississippi. And at the time, I had already known a bunch of people here, but it was still really nerve-wracking. So starting to, you know, thinking about Marines and all that. But um, one of my closest friends, Will, he texted me one day when I was getting ready to leave Japan, and he asked what t-shirt size I was, and I was like, why? And he told me that he was going to sign me up for Marines, and I remember freaking out. I was like, I am never doing Marines. Like, you cannot do that to me. <laughs> like, you cannot just make that decision for me. And then uh, when I moved here, every day that I came to church, everyone was trying to convince me to sign up for Marines, and I would not do it. I was too scared. I was... Too scared of like humiliating myself, doing air raids at school in, in front of a bunch of people that I don't know, and then doing the workouts early in the morning and not you know, worrying about not being able to keep up with the workouts. But anyway, one night I was at Apex and I was waiting to be picked up and um, it was just me, Jana, Will, and I think Ben Mohawk was there. But um, they were still trying to convince me and I would not do it, but somehow later that night before I left, they did it and I signed up for Marines finally. And then, um, let's see, where am I? <laughs> but uh, that decision really changed my life for the better. I, I think moving into the ninth grade year, after being settled in and getting to know more people, I would have done it eventually. But I really would have regretted not doing that my first year in eighth grade. And I think it just, it was just truly a, a life-changing choice for me. And then, so, let's see. Um, hold on, sorry about that. That's why, I was a little confused, because there we go. Um, just thinking about the fact that I even missed out my seventh grade year, which as y'all know, Jana said earlier, that it was kind of out of my control. I wasn't even living here. I didn't even know what Marines was, but thinking about missing out that first year just kind of breaks my heart every time, even though there was nothing I can do about it, but I can't imagine how I'd feel if I missed my eighth grade year too. But the point of telling you about my first Marines experience is not I mean, it's all about that Marines was not what I thought it would be. I grew closer to my friends who were so welcoming and encouraging through every workout and every air raid. And I also got to know new people, which I was scared of doing, but it turned out to be so fun and just really life-changing. And then at the end of Marines, I felt a deeper understanding about my relationship with God and grew so much closer to him. Uh, one of my favorite things about Marines is the leadership. My first experience in leadership in Marines was joining the praise band in ninth grade. And being part of Praise Band is something that can be exhausting. We used to work like every Sunday, all day, and it was tiring, but it was so worth it. 
to dedicate that work and prepare for Marines and finally see everything come together that, that week of Marines and then have the whole crowd to jump and sing with us. It was amazing. And in my 10th grade year, I got to be a, a squad leader, which made my Marines experience even more exciting. Um, I love being able to go to camp a day early and spend the day getting to know everyone and get ready for the week and to see everything come together. And then after that 10th grade year, I was so pumped to be a platoon leader. I, like, I could not tell you how excited I was for my 11th grade Marines. And then unfortunately, as you all know, the Marines was canceled, which was really sad for us, as if canceling school and not being able to get out of the house is not bad enough. I kind of saw it coming, but it was com when Marines was confirmed that it was canceled, it really just broke my heart. And missing out on Marines kind of is a constant reminder to me that we need to like take the time to really enjoy the things in the present and realize how incredibly, incredibly blessed we are to experience Marines in the first place. Uh, some of my favorite memories of Marines include watching the guys attempt to do the box push-ups push while Mr. Tom yells at them, and then um, that first air raid Sunday afternoon when everyone gets down the floor and does air raids. It's like over 100 people yelling, Jesus loves me at the top of their lungs simultaneously. It's absolute chaos, but it's awesome. And then the late night talks with my roommates and being absolutely miserable the next morning because we stayed up way too late. And then, you know, all the amp beds and the wet grass, but it was all worth it. As a senior this year, it's hard to believe that my time in Apex and Marines is coming to an end, but I'm so thankful for all the memories and experiences that I have had. I want to thank Jana for working nonstop to make Marines the absolute best they can be and pushing me out of my comfort zone to do something that I'm so glad I did. You have always been a bright light to the youth group, and I pray that next year everything is back to normal and you continue to be that light and change many lives. I want to thank anyone who has contributed to Marines with time, money, or food, or yelling at us at PT. Without y'all, Marines would not be what it is today. And to anyone that is younger than us, like coming into Apex and thinking about doing Marines, but is maybe too scared, trust me, I have been there. And I encourage you to, like highly encourage you to give it a shot. It really changed my life for the better. And just talking about Marines, like I'll probably start crying continuing to talk about how much I'll miss it. So all I'll say for now is that I encourage you to step out of your comfort zone, face your fears, and I can guarantee you that you will probably love it as much as we do. Thank you. Hey. Uh, my name is Will Thornton, and so about a week ago, Jana told us, I want to say maybe it was a week ago, maybe it was Wednesday, I'm not sure, but Jana told us that we had to uh, make a little speech and talk in front of everyone, so my first thought was, I'm going to have the best speech out here, and then I didn't make a speech, so... <laughs> So, but I've, I've got a good, I've, I think I've got a pretty good roadmap of how I'm gonna go through this. Um, so, my first experience with our youth group, um, my, going into my seventh grade year, was I was standing in my kitchen with my mom, and I look out, my, I look out the kitchen window out towards the road, and I see a bunch of, like, just people running across my neighbor's yard dressed up in black clothes, and I was thinking, what is happening? And then they bust up into my house um, and try to kidnap me, and I was fighting back. I, I'm not sure who I punched. I think it might have been Ian McNeil, but... Um, my, so my first experience with this youth group was being kidnapped and taken out to have one of the most fun days of my life with... It was like an ice cream water slide or something. We had, we had a tarp out, and we were just sliding all over with just random stuff on it and we had a table of ice cream and I don't know that that one experience really hooked me um and whenever I whenever I joined I didn't see it I, I wasn't really expecting too much right before it but then once I joined it was probably one of the best things to ever happen to me uh and early on into it, um, I decided to try out joining the, tri joining the praise band. Um, but I didn't join for the piano, because uh, I hadn't learned how to play piano yet. 
I was joining to sit on a little wooden box and drum on it. And I did that for about a year. And then I backed out of it after my first Marines in seventh grade. So then eighth grade Marines comes along and I'm sitting there in the crowd and I'm just sitting there watching and singing and just having fun during all the music. And I'm, and I was sad. I was happy that I was enjoying the time, but I was sad that I wasn't taking part in the praise band. Um, and then that final night, whenever we finished up, I remember everyone was packing up all the chairs, cleaning up Durwise, and I go up to Jana and I tell her, I need to join this again. I need to, I, I really, really want to be part of this praise band again. So she lets me join it. <laughs> Thankfully, she let me join it. And I think I've been a part of it ever since, or I know I've been a part of it ever since. <laughs> um, but that wasn't my biggest moment for Marines. My favorite thing about Marines is that you get there and everyone's just spread out and you have no idea what's about to happen. And the whole thing that I remember every single time is that you're sitting there and when Jana's gonna put you in your groups, you're thinking, Man, I really hope I get to be with all my friends, but Jana, Jana knows better than that. Jana, Jana isn't gonna let that happen. Um, you see, it seems like every year I'm, I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'll get with this friend. Maybe I'll get, maybe I'll be able to get with Grace and Walker or something like that. And then it just doesn't happen. And you're put with a bunch of random people that you don't really talk to at all. And by the end of the week, you've you've gotten close with them, like you've grown a personal relationship with the people that you've never talked to, be it people from seventh grade to 12th grade. And I don't know, that's just, it's something you can't do without an opportunity like Marines. It really is, to me, the best way to grow in your faith with other people. It's so, personal and I really don't know how to put it other than other than that but I'm gonna miss it it's it's been a it's been a major part of my life since seventh grade every every single year dreading the workouts but but just loving it at the same time waking up at 5 a.m to go work out in a wet, cold field or on cold, hard concrete and tearing up your hands. It, looking at it from the outside, it doesn't seem like an experience that's like too enjoyable, like Grace was saying with, uh, with, the, uh, with her not wanting to do it, the way we described it to her, I'm sure she wasn't really looking forward to it, but it's something that once you experience it, you can never get enough of it. And now that I'm graduating and moving on to college and going to Hattiesburg in a few months, I'm gonna look back at this next, <laughs> next April. I'm gonna be looking back and just thinking about all I miss about this. And I'm gonna miss Jana a lot. <laughs> Cause Jana's just always there. Always has been, always will be for any of us that need her. And that's talking to you guys. If you ever need anything, Jana's the one to talk to. <laughs> um, but to finish off my unscheduled program, um, <laughs> I want to thank Jana for making me grow more as the person I am today and just helping me so much along my walk with Christ. Thank you.
I don't really know how I'm supposed to follow the three of them, but I'm going to try my best. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, my name is Walker Johnson, and I'm currently a senior in the Apex Youth Group. Um, I really don't even know where to start. Marines and Apex have been such a fundamental part of my spiritual growth over the last six years. They have both allowed me to become a very different version of myself, and for that I'm extremely grateful. I also would not be in the position I am today if it weren't for support, the support and guidance of Jana, as well as uh, support from our small group, small group leaders, Gray, Mr. Nick, Ms. Jill, and Ms. D. Um, so when I was younger, Marines seemed to be one of the scariest things that I could ever participate in. My biggest fear was always being called to the front of the room to demonstrate exercises during PT for all the platoons. But it really is crazy how fast time goes by, because yesterday I overcame what used to be my biggest fear, and I led PT for my first and last time. Marines isn't something that I can describe. It's just something you have to go into with an open mind and experience for yourself. What I will say about Marines is that it's an experience unlike anything else. It teaches patience, kindness, compassion, endurance, and discipline. During Marines, you're forced to listen to others, work with the team, build new friendships, take on responsibility of being a leader. You could view these requirements as opt obstacles, or you could choose to embrace them with open arms and learn something from it. As the years have gone on, Marines has taught me how to become completely unapologetic when it comes to my faith, but also how to be bold and stand up for myself when it really counts. And over the, this weekend uh, with many Marines, um, Jana has preached about how sometimes God's, God puts us into situations that we don't always understand. He gives us challenges that we have no idea how to face and we're often expected to act like everything's okay just because we're church going and God loving people. But I've learned that it's okay to not always act like everything in our lives is perfect because it's not. It's okay for us to ask questions. It's okay for us to grieve our losses. And most importantly, it's okay for us to not understand why things happen the way that they do. Um, if anything, I think it's almost abnormal for us not to question things because it's human nature for us to go looking for answers when we're curious about something that we don't understand. Um, but sometimes I think that we just must accept that there isn't an answer for everything because if there was, then we wouldn't need God and we most definitely do. Um, so this is where our faith comes in. And without faith, we have nothing else to hold on to because everything else will eventually fade, but God never will. I think this is the most important lesson I've learned with my time at Apex. We all have questions, some have answers and some don't. And that's something we've all just gotta learn to accept and trust God with. I will forever be grateful for the relationships I've formed through this church community and how, for how my relationship with God has grown. I appreciate Jenna giving me the opportunity to speak today and thank you for your time this morning and God bless. As you can see, we have an exceptional group of seniors and their leadership has been invaluable. I can't even think about next year, not going to think about next year, and I don't know how I'm going to make it through y'all's baccalaureate Sunday. Just saying. Um, as you can see, uh, what this church has done, not just this year, but all the way back, 12 years, through the Ministry of Marines, um, makes a lasting impact um, in these students' lives, and not just the students, in the volunteers, in the leaders, um, it is truly a life-altering experience, and this is something that nobody else does, but because of your generosity, your kindness, your witness, um, your service, we are pouring Christ into a generation and then sending them out to continue to pour Christ into others. So thank you for making it possible. And... Um, as little, I guess, I don't know if little is the right word, <laughs> that Marines was this year, 2022, watch out, because it is back on. We are going to do it right. So if you would, please join me in prayer. Almighty God, we are so grateful, Lord, for your son. We are so grateful for that you invite us to worship, to serve, to witness that you invite us to be a part of your work. God, we are so grateful for this church that has made a home, a refuge, a haven where teenagers and children can come and know that they have a place to belong, that they know that they matter, and where they know that um, they can contribute and be a part. Lord, we thank you for providing Marines for us, God, and we look forward um, to many more years to come. Lord, continue to use this church, to use this place, 
to be a light and a beacon and to speak the truth of your son, Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. wonderful Sunday we have experienced this day. Uh, as I spoke with the students this morning as they were eating breakfast and prayed with them, I reminded them that w they were not performing today. That this is the first Sunday after Easter. And today we we're worshiping the risen Christ. And that's what they've done. Thank you for doing that today. 
uh, for each one of you for sharing in, uh, in worship. Uh, you didn't perform. You led us. And uh, as I said earlier, nobody knows when we make a mistake unless our guitar strap breaks and we make a rumbling sound. <laughs> That's when they go, oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> this guy's so talented. So talented. A couple of announcements before we go this morning. One is uh, uh, your offerings. Uh, there are plates in the house uh, as you leave the doors. You still can give online, and you can still uh, mail in your checks. Thank you for your faithfulness. Um, your faithfulness in giving allows the church to do this. And these are pretty important folks in the kingdom of God. Uh, we're not preparing students for the future. We're preparing them for right now in their schools and in their classes and uh, going off to college next year to be good examples of faithfulness wherever you go, if that's even possible in Hattiesburg. And, uh, uh, but, but, uh, and if you've been to Hattiesburg, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, I ain't meant to state or Ole Miss, but in Hattiesburg, uh, your faithfulness allows us to do this. And I want to thank you as a congregation for your faithfulness to youth ministry. Uh, I think these are the most special folks in our church. Y'all are okay. These are, these are pretty good folks out here. And I want you to know how grateful that I am as a pastor to have Jana on this staff. Uh, I want you to know that. <clears throat> Not many youth ministers have I worked with over the years that would have done this, like this. So she's a gift to us, so don't forget that. Uh, today at 2 o'clock, there is a, a wedding shower for Emma Mohawk and for Kate Holland. Uh, in the uh, fellowship hall, so please don't forget about that, and uh, let's love on that uh, young couple, uh, Emma being one of us that I suspect did this uh, thing, uh, Marines back in the day. Uh, so just another, another part of her life, post-Marines, and part of our church. Uh, I do want you to know that Tuesday night, I want you to be in prayer for our church and for what happens in this sanctuary. Tuesday night at 6, our new police chief, uh, uh, DeJohn uh, Hampton uh, is going to meet with clergy. And so there are several of us clergy, and I've reached out to a, to a number of clergy. Uh, we're going to meet with the, our new police chief this week here in the sanctuary. Talk about our community, talk about our issues, talk about how, uh, what our issues are as clergy, and talk about how the church and different churches can partner with our police to address the issues of our community. That's the beginning of something big. And uh, very grateful for our new chief being a part of this. And uh, th following that, probably in the next week or so, in a larger facility than ours, we'll have a community gathering. And I would anticipate and expect and invite you to be a part of that community gathering because it's not just one part of town or one group going to make this work. It's all of us. And uh, we all have a part in our community. So uh, grateful for our, for our new uh, Police chief, and for that work. Uh, that's all I got. No, oh, no choir, pra no choir practice tonight. No choir practice tonight. Uh, thank you. I forgot about that, Nick. Uh, uh, no choir practice tonight. Now would you receive this benediction? And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit abide with each of us.